Well, good morning. It is a pleasure to greet you this morning. I trust all is well. We are at the end of 1 Timothy. Today's reading was chapter 6, verses 17 through 21. It's an interesting passage of scripture, although it's just a few verses, because you see in the early church, there were many issues that had to be sorted out. The closer that they came to the end of the first century, the more important it became for the church to be clear about what was appropriate teaching and doctrine. Following the ascension of Jesus, the apostles had expected his return to be imminent. However, as time continued to pass, their new normal was in developing the means by which to give proper instruction to new and old converts alike. As we come to the end of 1 Timothy, we have seen throughout the, the Paul's letter to Timothy the, the recurring theme of, of things like um, him speaking about false teachers. He was very intentional about it. And, and the, this, uh, this business of coming close to the end of the first century and having to get some, some uh, order and instruction to the church for new believers uh, became very important, and he was very intentional about that. And as we get to the final few verses of this letter, Paul gives his instructions to Timothy before closing out the letter. He tells him to guard what has been entrusted to him. In these few verses, there are at least three brief messages, both for Timothy as well as for ourselves. You see, it's interesting, isn't it, that Paul addressed those who are wealthy in the community of faith. Some of our readings in just the last couple of days um, have Paul speaking about the love of money as the root of all evil, many times misunderstood by people, misinterpreted and misused. But notice Paul doesn't condemn wealth, nor does he imply that it is evil. He doesn't even suggest that they should give all of their wealth away. Quite the contrary. Paul makes it clear that the wealth of the believers is a gift from God. Now, preserving the treasure, however, is not the focus of the wealthy believer. Serving God is. Recognizing the way in which the wealthy have been blessed so that others might be blessed by them is Paul's point. Now, for the 21st century church, this is a message not just for wealthy individuals within the church, but also for the church itself. In so many ways, the church, particularly the Western church, is blessed with great resources. Compared with the church in many countries around the world, we're truly wealthy and the mandate to carry the gospel into the vast regions of the globe is the call that God has placed upon us. For the individual and for the church, Paul was making a case that wealth is not in and of itself a sin. However, the moment we begin hoarding our treasures, the less focus we place upon the Lord. There's a reason, Jesus said, for where your treasure is there will your heart be also. The last message that Paul has for us is found in verse 20. He tells Timothy to avoid that which is falsely called knowledge. Now, Paul's not talking about the knowledge like we normally think of. We normally think in terms of knowledge in the way of learning all we can learn about a subject or about a circumstance. But in this case, the Greek word for knowledge is gnosis. This was the false teaching that humanity was a spirit imprisoned in a body. The only thing that really mattered was the spirit. This movement became known as Gnosticism. They taught that all matter, of, uh, all matter was evil and freedom came through gnosis or knowledge. 
And this heresy began to impact the church in the second century and became an issue for the early church to address. And so Paul was beginning to see that uh, emerge in uh, the church at Ephesus. Jesus said that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. As Paul instructed Timothy, so he does us as well. You see, it matters how we live, what we do, and where our thoughts are. This brings us back to a recurring Wesleyan theme. We are to attend to the holy ordinances of God and grow into the likeness of Christ, who was fully human and fully God. Consider these questions. What do you treasure the most in your life? And where is your heart? What do you treasure the most in your life? And where is your heart? Question two. How consistent are, are your physical disciplines with your spiritual disciplines? How consistent are your physical disciplines with your spiritual disciplines? Question three. How are the blessings in your life becoming blessings in the lives of others? How are the blessings in your life becoming blessings in the lives of others? Well, I trust that you have a wonderful day, a Memorial Day nonetheless, and that it is a, a day that you will be able to reflect and remember in a variety of, of ways upon these questions, upon the meaning of the day, so that um, in this new normal, we might truly be the church in changing times. Go in peace.